Guys, I had the weirdest dream last night. You're not going to believe it. I dreamt that Carlos Tevez signed for us for 450 pounds a week. Can you imagine? Tevez here playing with you clowns. <laughs> oh, Carlos, you are here. Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome to episode 9 here at Queen of the South as we look to win the Champions League with our Scottish team on the Impossible Dream. And today we are back a little bit earlier than anticipated because we can not only win the league in these next two games, but we can also therefore secure promotion to the Premiership for the first time in a long time for Queen of the South. How long has it been since they got promoted actually? Let's have a quick look. So the last time they were in the Premiership was 1963-64 season. So it's been a little while, so I think we can I think we can put this one down as a potentially history-making episode. So we're going to be playing Inverness, as you can see up here, and also uh, our growth today win those games, then we will be we will officially have secured promotion. Now, one other thing to quickly catch you up on involves the Scottish Cup. And it is Celtic that will be will be playing at Hamden Park, so potentially a big payday for us there. But unfortunately for us. St. Mirren beat, uh, they beat Rangers in the other semi-finals, so we've, not only have we got the most, more, very much more, the more difficult tie, we could, we could have made the final, but if we do beat Celtic, I suppose the other way to look at that is that we would start the final a very, very good chance of winning it, and therefore, getting into Europe as well, so, that'll be next episode, but we'll see what happens, yeah, but, uh, yeah, if we could have got the other side, we could have got ourselves into that final, now let's have a quick catch up of, uh, on the field and see how we got into this position, the first game to catch you up on is against Wraith Rovers, so let's go see how we did against them, a bit of a bogey side of ours, we fell behind late in the first half, but went in level at half time when Fitzpatrick played in McGrory, Wraith retook the lead before substitutes Tevez and Roy combined to rescue a point. I mean, you're not doing too bad when you can bring Carlos Tevez off the bench in the Scottish Championship, but that's what we had to do. I think, well, we do officially have a bogey side, I think. They just play a different way. They tend to play more on the counter-attack, and it just it really makes it difficult for us to, to beat them, to be honest, so credit to them. But you can see Cassidy and Patton did not have a good game, and uh, well, no, neither did Chima at the back. This was a midweek game. You can see a Tuesday, so... We had to. We, we didn't have to, but we did rest a few players to rotate because we had a couple of midweek games coming up in a row, and maybe that was a part of it. But to be honest, I just have a hard time setting the team up against Wraith Rovers, so uh, it kind of is what it is. Uh, next game was against fellow Scottish Cup semi finalist Kilmarnock. This was in the league, though. So Made this a preview, perhaps, of the Scottish Cup final, two championship clubs. Let's see how we did anyway. The only goal came when wingback Cooper crossed for Roy. Ali Roy, Ali Roy, Ali, Ali Roy. He just he can't stop scoring, can he? And Cooper in to give DeBeo a rest for this one and was brilliant. He, he just did his best impersonation of him and, yeah, got three points. It was, uh, we made hard work of it. It was a game we should have won. XG Tracker can kind of tell you that. But just the one goal, Tomlin, I'm going to put him down already. He's a bit of a failure, um, but it doesn't matter because I still can't believe we've got Tevez. <laughs> Tomlin doesn't worry me now. Uh, but, yeah, that has... Uh, it's got all the signs anyway of not working. So that's a shame because how much is he on a week? 700 pounds a week. We could do with uh, getting rid of that, couldn't we? Anyway, final game to catch you up on was against Hamilton. I think they're in the relegation battle still. So let's see how we did. We had a halftime lead when Cassidy found Tevez for his first goal for the club. And Cassidy was again the provider as he crossed for Patton to seal the point. So again, we made hard work of the game. Um, this was much more even, actually, on XG. Hamilton were, they were, to be fair, unlucky to not take something from the game. It was only stoppage time, as you can see there, that we ended up uh, getting the winner. Roy, this time, was a little bit off, maybe a little bit tired. Uh, Tevez, though, with his first goal for the club. And, yeah, we, we played, again, we played well without being outstanding but we were good enough to get the points so as you saw that puts us uh in a position now where we are eight points clear with a game in hand if I, well as i said four points we need this episode to guarantee it that's assuming that party this will win and we're guaranteed already a playoff spot so that's excellent and um yeah next episode will be the scottish cup semi-final as it turns out but let's have a look and see what we're doing here against who are we playing first did i say inverness 
So we can see we're expecting a 4-2-3-1 formation from them. And this is the team that we're sending out. We have had to rotate a little bit. Oh, McKay's absolutely knackered. So that's not going to work. One second here. Okay, so it's going to be Eastwood in goal, Cooper at left uh, at left wing back there with Nditi Chima, which is not ideal as a back duo, and Gibson, the uh, old Wally Gibson, uh, the most Scottish sounding name <laughs> alive, or name anyway. Uh, Cochrane is going to have to go in and play halfback for us in this one. It's going to be McGrory and Dixon in midfield. Tomlin gets another chance as the number 10 with Roy and Patton, the two strikers up top. Okay, so we can see the team sheets there. We do have a, a Tevez on the bench if needed, but we'll try and keep him a little bit more fresh for the next one, which is against our Broth, which is going to be the tougher of the two games, I suspect. Um, I'm going to say let's. We've been a little bit ignore the recent praise. Yeah, there's no pressure here. We've we've been looking a, a little. I, I I mean the word that came to mind is stodgy recently just struggling to get past some of the weaker teams in the league so i'm going to take a bit of pressure off here maybe you know being top of the league and unexpectedly top of the league as well is just having a little bit of an impact on uh, on the boys but of course this is not a, our strongest side it's not a weak side by any means oh and cochran and roy have had a bit of a mix up there can we go and win this ball back now, Dixon? Close. We need Tomlin to step up and show why we signed him. I mean, he's almost on twice the money of Tevez. Which, oh, block Cochrane away. Here we go with McGrory. I was just wondering for a second if we could catch him on the break there. Which, I mean, it's it sort of says two things. A, how cheap we've got Tevez for. And, and B, how much of a waste we've got Tomlin. But in my defense... How was I to know that Tevez was not only a free transfer, but also willing to join us for such a small uh, small weekly wage? And there is 1-0 down Aaron McEnough with his third of the season. And we've fallen behind early. Let's give it a demand more, perhaps. And, I mean, what we don't want, we, we just want to get over the line at this point, to be honest. I don't care if we stumble over the line. We've got... A, a comfortable lead, but it's certainly not an insurmountable one, especially given that after this, in the league, we face the other three teams around us. It's our Broth, Partick Thistle, and, and Air United as well. Tomlin with a free kick in, it's headed away. And DT will chase after it. So yeah, what we don't want to do is, is kind of be in a situation where we're dwelling this out. Ideally, if I'm being extremely uh, selfish, what I'd like to have done is have the league won so that we can... Uh, just concentrate on the Celtic game and and sort of put a full strength. A cracking ball for Patton. If he's onside, oh, it's a wonderful block by the defender. And he was onside. Just maybe took a little bit too long over it. Tomlin will take the corner. We don't have Waita up there. We uh, don't win the header there at all, actually. Chima, who is in the team, is a decent enough player in the air. But he's no Dave Waita, obviously. And DT forward to McGrory. Tomlin. And DT Tomlin is, um, I mean, uh, he's a bit of a risk, a little bit in real, like in real life, from what you sort of understand from Tomlin. And I'm by no means, a I mean, I've heard of him obviously, but I wouldn't say I, I'm familiar with him as a player. But he certainly has the reputation, I think, of being naturally gifted, but maybe not, um, not having quite the work work ethic to go with it. And that's what's held him back from being potentially even an international. And certainly, his his, his attributes would would back that up. But he seems to be, he spent a lot of time being complacent. Uh, he just doesn't really seem to to care what I say to him. So, yeah, he might well. And that is 2-0. And Willie Gibson, or Willie Gibson, was just a little bit slow, wasn't he? Let's try berating. I'm going to say taking the pressure off hasn't worked. Uh, the back four, though, to be fair, looks particularly weak, doesn't it? I mean, Gibson's roughly my age. He's no chance of keeping up. Cooper just didn't quite get in on the cover quick enough. And Eastwood was just left horribly exposed, wasn't he? You can see again, it, uh, we've got a negative reaction from Tomlin. Um, what have we got? Half an hour gone. It's, it's still a long time to go. So in one sense, there's there's time to rescue it. Uh, on the other hand, it's 3-0. So we're going to say that this isn't working. Let's go Let's raise the tempo. Let's get rid of that. I think we still want to work the ball into the box. Let's maybe try this. 
I don't want to push up too much because we've got, I mean, Gibson's getting exposed sitting in a low line. Imagine what he's going to be like uh, with a, anything high up. We'll try and, and make him make the wingers come back inside. That is, yeah, not too much you can do about that, is there? Let's uh, let's give them some encouragement. I feel like no matter what happens from this highlight, we're going to need to encourage them. Cooper, McGrory. Ball back there for Chima and Diti. And Diti gets it wide. Nicely done there for Cooper. Can he whip across in? He goes short for McGrory. Back to Cooper. There's the ball in towards Roy, but it's headed away. Cochran to Tomlin. Dixon. McGrory has a go, and that is just over the top. But at least signs of life. Uh, Swanson should be back. I think he's a week or two away, so that will definitely help us because uh, Max Johnson has played pretty much every game since uh, since we lost Swanson last episode. Uh, so he needed a rest here, and yeah, we're gonna. I mean, obviously, it's not good enough. Uh, I'm not angry, just disappointed. That always works, doesn't it? Oh, as your mum or dad said that to you. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. You know, you know, you've let them down when that's the case. <laughs> I'm not angry, guys. You've just broken my spirit here. Tomlin with a corner. Can we get that away? Or oh, in, I should say. We can't. Cooper has done his best, but we're getting overrun, aren't we? Can Cochran win it back for us? Is he going to give away a penalty? Yes, he is. And I think at this point, we maybe concede the game. Um, yeah, I mean, at 4-0, it's, we haven't been let down by this team too many times, uh, this season, but we've, yeah, we've, we've been, we've been getting let down by them here. Okay, so what we're basically doing is conceding the game, essentially. Um, so we've made three subs. Roy, Cochran, and Nditi come off. We're not gonna, we're not gonna waste their legs for this one. And uh, we're bringing on Owen Hunter, one of the youngsters, to play centre back for the remainder of the game. So him and uh, Chima will be, they'll be a thing that we hold, won't they? Uh, Josh Todd is going to come on and play in midfield. We're going to move Tomlin out left, and Fitzpatrick is going to come on to play out wide right. So, like I say, we'll just see what happens with this. And, yeah, I mean, wingers, which I've struggled to get wingers to work for us, if I'm completely honest. But, I mean, like I say, the, the game's gone. It's not been a good one for us, so let's just rest some legs. There's a good ball there for Fitzpatrick. Can he find the finish? No. Goalkeeper makes a decent save. And... Well, I mean, we've come from 4-0 down before. You never know your luck. Tomlin, ball in, headed away again. And is that going to... It's going to be the end of the high... Oh, is it? Dixon. Dixon playing as a defensive midfielder is very much just uh, trying to squeeze a, a round peg in a square hole. Hopefully, he does a decent job. Fitzpatrick, can he whip a cross in for us now? There it is. Decent one as well. And Rory Patton pulls one back. It's 4-1, an hour to go. Oh, sorry, it's an hour gone, essentially. Half an hour to go. Could there be the, a second miraculous comeback of the season for us here? Decent header, wasn't it? Really good header. Good ball in from Fitzpatrick as well. And, well, you never know. Where there's life, there's hope. And life is quickly ticking away from us here, isn't it? Um... Here we go, Tomlin. If we get a second one now, they'll be a nervous uh, last 15 for them. Can McGrory... Now, Doran's the guy that's got all the goals for them, isn't he? He's got the hat trick. Fitzpatrick gets back well. And, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a change of shape here is... It'll just give them something else to think about, won't it? The question we have to ask ourselves, or we'll start and ask ourselves is... I I mean, let's be honest. We, we are like... Oh, Orbit up, essentially. When you come back because you can go up, <laughs> it's it's looking good. This is not our day, though. Is it Doran with another one? What are you doing next season, Doran? You want to come and play in the Premiership for us? Uh, but we do need to have a think about what we're going to do and who we're going to keep. Um, we I, I essentially think we need a new back four. 
Uh, trying to think who's right back right now. No, because Swanson is on loan and he will be leaving. I think Wheater is okay. If we had to pay, if we had to start Wheater in the Premiership, I think it would be okay. Uh, we'd obviously have to play a deep line, but I mean, I might as well talk about this because, as I said, the game is gone. Uh, but I think he would be okay. But we need uh, uh, Debeo's not. I don't want him necessarily starting in the Premiership as first choice. So we need a left back. We need a right back because Swanson and even the backup Johnson are gone, and Gibson's contract is up. And I'll keep him as a coach, but he's not staying as a player. And uh, we, we need someone to play next to Wheater as well. So we, we need a rebuild of the defense. We could do with a better goalkeeper, but Eastwood has... I don't think he's let us down this season. Um, so I'm not... I don't think he is priority one. Uh, midfield. I mean, I mean Tevez is... I think he's got to be the number 10 for next season. Uh, Cochrane, I'm more than happy with. Little is, uh, he's conscious of free transfer six. This is ridiculous now. This is just embarrassing. Um, Little, I, I, I would like to get back if we can sign him permanently. It just depends whether that can happen or not. Um, and then we've got Roy as a striker. Patton, I think if Patton's contract, I don't think it's up. I won't, I won't actively sell him, but... I think we could. We, we're going to need somebody to score the goals for us. Fitzpatrick's around again. He's another one. I, I don't think we sell him unless maybe unless a bid comes in. But ugh, we just say focus. I don't even know what to say to him. But we've got that game completely, completely wrong. That is, well, choose your. It, it was embarrassing. It was shameful. It was all those things. So there we go. The goal difference takes a hit as well. That's a big result for Inverness actually, as they look to push into the playoffs. Humiliation for Queen of the South. They are not wrong there. And eight points is the gap now with four games to go. And it'll suddenly it looks a little bit more unlikely we can do it this episode, doesn't it? We will need to win and Pardic Thistle will need to lose and uh, or draw at least. We'll figure the maths out <laughs> after the next game. I don't want to have to do it in off the top of my head. But anyway, we'll be back to face our growth and themselves. They need a result because they're in danger of dropping out of the playoffs. Okay, welcome back. Now, we owe you a performance after that last shambolic performance, and this is a massive game. We're away to our growth. Now, if we were to... They're outside the playoffs, so they need to win this game as well. But if we were to lose our 33rd game and Pardic Thistle were to win their 33rd game, uh, and then we play Pardic Thistle next, so if they were to beat us in that as well, then suddenly our eight-point gap could be a two-point gap with two games to play. And for us, that is Air and Dunfermline. So we have a really difficult run in we don't want this gap coming down any further than it already has. We want to win this game and maintain that eight-point gap as a minimum. And uh, even if we can't win it this episode, make sure that we're getting it all wrapped up nice and neatly when we play uh, Pardic Thistle next game, next episode. But let's have a look at what we're doing here against our growth. We are expecting a 4-4-2 out of them. And this is a team we're sending out. We've gone, everybody's rested, ready to go, full strength. So it is Eastwood in goal. It's DeBeo and DT Wheater and Johnson. Johnson, of course, is the uh, right back on loan from Motherwell. Swanson should be back soon. He's two days away. We're not going to risk him in this, not with Partick Thistle coming up. This is the Wednesday, so on the Saturday, he'll be back for that one, though. It'll be McKay as the halfback. Why can't I get this to scroll back up now? It'll be McKay as the halfback. Little and Cochran in midfield. Tevez as the number 10. Roy and Cassidy up top. Let's get this done. Okay, so we can see the team sheets here. Sam Stanton, I actually wanted to sign him in January uh, as a midfield option for us, but we just we didn't have the money at that point. I'm not quite sure where we found money for Tevez. To, I don't even know where we got that from, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we can see uh, the lineups there. And they, our both actually went on to, since say, in between the two games here, they've actually gone on and won the Caramel Wafer Cup, having knocked us out, of course. Let's recent praise. Let's put on a show out there. I can just about get on board with that. Uh, we'll, we will, of course, pump our fists and say, get out there and put on a show. And let's see if we can go and do just that. I'm really liking no tunnel interviews this FM. I've got to say whether they'll come back in the premiership, of course, might be uh, something that happens. But for this season, anyway, really enjoying just being able to click kick off and uh, and get straight out there. But here we go. Tevez with a corner. Wheatler, of course, is on the pitch. Can we find him? We can. And it's just over the bar, was it? Or just wide? And we go again. DeBeo with a throw. Finds Cassidy. Tevez ooh, goes to make a run. Not the best pass. I actually think if this if this team was to go out and be our, our first 11 in the Premiership next season, 
I think we do okay. Um, where we obviously lack, and we saw it against Inverness very, very clearly. Squad depth, there's a great ball for Roy. He brings it down on his chest. That's a stunning goal if he's onside. I think he is. The linesman standing still. I don't like where this is headed. No, it is a goal. It is a goal, yes. All right, very nicely done. Wonderfully brought down by Roy, and it is 1-0. Cassidy continues to... Uh, well, he's very hot and cold, is Cassidy, but when he's not, when he's hot, he is, he's boiling. And uh, that will, inside 10 minutes, one goal up, you love to see it. Our broth, uh, they're sort of the, the rock that is falling down the table right now. So we've got, but you know, whereas everybody else is maybe we're picking them up at a bad time at the end of the year, our broth, so, f oh, well, they're, they're about to score now, aren't they? Johnson can't quite win it back for us. Uh, they are the team that is not in great form. So if we can not give them a chance to recapture that form. It would be good ball in and I had to open a big mouth, didn't I? 1-1. One, one. Let's give them some encouragement. And yeah, I mean, what we, as I've said before, we don't want to make this any more nervous than it needs to be. We just need to get across the line. It's, we has just been ever so slightly done in behind there, hasn't he? Do I have a deep line? We do. And it is... Well, Patterson is offside. Can we not Can we not give it for that? Is Noble in behind Wheater? See, now the annoying thing about this is that if Patterson's not there, Johnson's not there, and... Well, that's a lot closer, isn't it? Whether it is offside or not, I don't know. But... Yeah, that's... Uh, well, make your own mind up. To me, that should that should be uh, at least... There's no VAR, so I suppose it doesn't matter, does it? But Patterson should have been given offside there. Here we, But I would say that, wouldn't I? Because I'm biased. Here we go with Tevez on the ball. Roy, Cassidy. Roy makes a run. Cochrane, it's looking for Tevez. Maybe, maybe 10 years ago he gets on the end of that pass. But uh, not 38-year-old Carlos Tevez. Little. To McKay. DeBeo is in space, as he always seems to be. Roy, picked up by Cochrane. Back to Roy. Roy with a chance. Roy with a goal. Number 23 of the season for Ali Roy. And we're back in front very, very quickly. And that's what we wanted to do, isn't it? Excellent stuff. And Ali Roy just keeps on scoring. It was a good tackle away, but Cochrane picked it up. Roy picked himself up, made the run. And what about that for a finish? Goalkeeper... Maybe looking to, uh, expecting the shot to go across him. Let's give them some praise. And if we can get another goal now, that would be a very, very nice uh, place to be at half time. But it looks as though it is going to be just the one goal lead. No, wait, here we go. And Diti late in first half stoppage time. Little gives it away. Ball forward. Wita is in trouble again here. And Diti is there. Eastwood makes the save. And that should be half time it is. So we are 2-1 up. And if we were to win this, then that really, that sort of breaks the back of what we need to do, doesn't it? But don't get complacent. We've got demotivated Little. Uh, well, you've not been particularly good, mate. So that's motivated him. Cassidy is demotivated. So let's say you've not been good enough. It's motivated him. And everybody else will pump our fists and say, giddy up, I suppose. Roy has been spectacular again. Little's the one, isn't he? Only playing a 6.6. .6. And we saw him give the ball away a few times in that half as well. Can we go and get ourselves a third goal? Next goal's huge, isn't it? Could we see them coming back from 3-1, given the form they're in and they fall? I mean, they, they were top of the league, and I thought they were, well, almost certain, not certainties, but very, very heavy favourites to go up. And they find themselves now out of the playoffs. It just goes to show how much this table can change around, considering... Oh, it's a great ball in for Cassidy. He's onside, and we have got the next goal. It's 3-1, and Cassidy runs over to the Queens. They're actually called the Doonhammers, I think, is their nickname. Doonhammers, something like that. It's a great nickname. But uh, the Queens, I think we're going to go with for this series. because <laughs> It just makes me giggle. There we go. Cassidy. Good finish. Great ball in from Johnson as well, to be fair to him. Now he's playing a little bit more regularly. He is, uh, his performances have improved as well. He's only young. He's only 18, isn't he? Yeah. So, 
the more he plays, you'd expect him to get a little bit better. But this game is now ticking by. I wonder if what we might want to do is, uh, again, look to save some legs. I've got Tomlin on the bench, so we'll bring him on for Tevez. Uh, Roy's on a hat trick, so we maybe don't want to take him off. Cochran, we could rest his legs. Uh, we could bring Dixon on for him. And it's going to be the old... Uh, I had I had faith the game was won and it needs to be fresh for, for other games when it comes to being asked why we took off Roy on a hat trick but 3-1 and it's just been maybe not completely making up for the Inverness debacle but it's certainly uh it's certainly got the three points we haven't got them yet though 40 odd seconds to go here and uh let's just waste a bit of time off the kickoff and uh have we gone a little bit early on the on the uh, three point celebrations here? If we were to lose the three points or drop two points from here, that would be highly disappointing, wouldn't it? Devastating, even. But there we go. We've got the win in the end, three two. We're not in the best form, and it won't make you worry a little bit coming <laughs> into Celtic. But uh, let's just say a win's a win. We have to raise our performances. Uh, let's just say well done. In the end, we got there. It is now an eleven point gap. So that means that if Partick Thistle fail to beat us, we will be champions. So that would mean 10-point gap with three games to go for them, of course. Uh, so a bonus for Ali Roy coming his way, which is uh, absolutely fine. And two goals from him. And it was uh, very, very nicely done as well. Now, you may see here we, ha we can ask him to waive. I'm not going to ask him to waive a bonus because we give him to him. If he plays well, he deserves it. We are down half a mil, which again is not great. But this, the excuses were overspending. But actually, if we if we go here, does it say what we last month? And I don't really know how to how to show. Oh, there it is. There expenditure last month. We lost. You can see there we lost. That's a loss, isn't it? Yeah. So we lost about thirty forty grand. That is that is sustainable if we were to go up. We can afford to lose thirty forty grand a month, and we would obviously. Uh, now, if we win the league as well with prize money. And I think we are just about, aren't we, in a position where we can say we're likely to win the league. We're going to get half a million. So in winning, I mean, there'll be a bonus that'll be paid out that'll come out of that. But we should just about break even financially, having won the league. And uh, and then obviously we will we will have more income being in the Premiership. There'll be a TV deal. There'll be bigger, uh, even if we get relegated next season, the, the, the price money at the end of the season will be at least, I would imagine, It'll be a little bit more usually than you, because usually it's, it sort of goes down the pyramid. So I, we, we, it's not as bad as it looks. It doesn't look great. <laughs> we are overspending, but it, it's not as bad as it looks, I promise. But guys, that is it for today. If you have enjoyed that, we'll just pretend Inverness didn't happen and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bathe in the Arbroath glory. We'll be back next time to hopefully not lose to Partick Thistle and confirm ourselves as a premiership club next season. And then we'll go and test ourselves against one of the best in the country. It'll be Celtic at Hampden Park for a place in the Scottish Cup final. And if we get to the Scottish Cup final, well, we could well go on and win it and find ourselves in Europe next year. Take care.